All right, so I don't know about you guys, if you like to make YouTube videos, you like to make art, music, acting. I think we've all been shut down by our parents that none of these creative careers are realistic. And then sometimes we're just like, mom and dad, look at Emma Chamberlain, she's making a million dollars from YouTube. She's got a Calvin Klein endorsement. She's got her own sunglass line. She's got a deal with Target. I'm at Target. Her own merch, and now she has her own coffee company. And then your parents sit there on their ass like, dude, I don't get it, okay, go back to school. Trust me, I've been there, but this time I actually dropped out of high school to pursue my business online, which is a whole other video if you guys wanna watch that. The point is, I think nowadays it's actually possible to make a full-time living off creating content and art. And when I was growing up, I had Asian stereotypical parents. I just knew that it was ingrained to go to school and college and follow this path, but I definitely believe today the time has changed. Influencers and YouTubers are able to create the next Nike if they wanted to. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about why I believe creating content and art, which has been a joke for so long, is now the number one way to build a giant empire and company. If you guys wanna know why I think it's possible for you or any influencer to create a huge company, keep on watching. Hey guys, my name's Jade, and if you're new to my channel, what's up? I combined psychology and marketing to give you guys the inside scoop of what's in in social media marketing. I'm an entrepreneur, I run a few businesses about social media, and weirdly enough, I don't tell too many people about this, but I actually do run and consult an agency for Shopify brands. Now, if you don't know what Shopify is, it's a platform where people can start a e-commerce store. And your favorite influencers like Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, everyone has literally ran and launched their store on Shopify. It's like the ad platform. And I originally got my start in marketing by consulting e-commerce brands for Shopify. So long story short, this is a very lovable and sensitive topic to me because I've actually recently physically seen a change and, ooh, I almost thought that was a spider. Okay, like I was saying, I recently saw a change in the people I'm talking to. Originally, the brands I would consult for were, don't get mad at me, but were older people, like in their 40s and 50s, and maybe they were like ex-executives of Nike and they started their own brand. But like nowadays, the people that are starting their e-commerce store and like brands are like YouTubers. I have a friend named Haley who launched Retro Reprise, which is her clothing brand. And more recently, I've been consulting for another YouTuber named Judy Travis for her clothing line as well. And it's like, it's getting to the point where I'm like, damn guys, I'm proud of y'all. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is I just believe that if anyone's able to create the next Nike or clothing brand, it's influencers. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about the three reasons why I think they're able to create the next Nike. But before we do, I quickly wanna say thank you guys because the last video of this influencer series kinda started blowing up and honestly, I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this series, get this video liked so you can let me know to make more because literally I will forget to make this continuation of the series. So yeah, just let me, let me know in the comments. Now the first reason why I believe influencers are able to create the next Nike is because influencers move fast. Influencers or YouTubers are typically their own boss. They do whatever the frick they want, basically. Their upload turnaround time is like in five days, they just upload a new video, which by the way, in the business like company world, it's really fast because most people take months and months to produce a single video. Brands like Nike, which are multi-billion dollar companies, have so much executive layers that they can't turn around campaigns that fast. They have to ask their CEO what their investors think, what their shareholders think. Now, if you don't know what the landscape of a company looks like, just imagine a giant onion. Say you're like an intern and you want to make a decision at Nike. Like there's so many layers you have to go through before you actually reach the core executive decision-making team, which can take sometimes years to make a single decision. So so the reason why I believe influencers have a little bit of advantage is they're literally able to make a quick decision. So when trends happen or memes happen, they're able to put a product in that same amount of time to ride that wave of momentum. They don't need to ask anyone for permission. They just do. And that's why you can see that Emma Chamberlain was able to spin around a coffee company in the same time of her YouTube career. Like, do you understand? Most brands stay in product development for like four or five years and Emma Chamberlain was able to do that, create a coffee company and maintain a YouTube multi-million dollar presence at the same time. If you guys wanna see my entire video of why I think influencers are predictable and the timeline of why it gets faster, I will put it in the cards below because you guys should check it out. But long story short, you guys know that it's insane. And honestly, as someone who's sat down with Shopify brands and influencers, like it's very apparent that influencers are also a little bit more impatient because the turnaround is so much more fast. But I definitely think it's an advantage because they're able to literally move at lightning speed and keep up with trends like no other. Now, the second reason why I believe influencers are maybe able to create the next Nike is because marketing is typically 
free for them. You do not need to spend paid advertising. If you guys don't know what paid advertising is, it's typically those Facebook and Instagram ads you see. And let me just tell you, like most brands that I know that are doing at least, you know, two or three million dollars in revenue, spend around like minimum $15,000 in ads. That is a lot of money, right? Especially if you don't know the return on investment on those ads. And influencers have a little bit of luck because they're able to just put out the product in a single YouTube video that maybe costs them the production and that's it. Like they don't have to pay an additional fee for the millions of eyeballs. I mean, I just talked about Facebook ads, but do you guys remember when billboard ads were a thing? Well, they still are. Like one campaign can be six figure deals above $150,000 just for one billboard ad. Like it's crazy to think a single YouTube video can do as much traffic as a billboard ad that costs above six figures. The advantages of being an influencer are uncomparable. So this is like one of the biggest reasons why I think influencers can beat Nike just because they can move fast. They have a higher profit margin because they don't have to spend it on advertising and they can focus on just building their team and growing the product line, which is insane. I'm actually just like pumped for this video. There's something bad or like mysterious I have to say. Typically my videos have some sort of like thesis, but like just imagine like that career that you got made fun of or that dream you have of being an artist that has never been realistic can actually come true. Like all you have to do is have that connection to your fan base and you're able to sell products and merchandise because you can move faster and cheaper than any other brand. Which leads me to my third point, which is even if you don't want to be the next Nike, you're still able to make a huge living off of the internet. And this is because the closest person to the consumer will always win. Brands cannot empathize and have relevancy to people. You know, they're just a brand. People don't like corporate companies. They just want to talk to people. And because you're the face or you're, you have that content, uh, whether you're a YouTuber and you make videos or you have TikToks, you're able to talk to those consumers and have the direct connection because you make them feel something and you have a story. Um, and not too many brands can do that without spending millions of dollars on a marketing budget, right? And hiring like five different athletes. It's much more expensive. It's doable, but I definitely think that this is the first time where you actually have a chance as someone who's maybe making videos in the room to create the next Nike. I did not go to school. I just started my business right out of high school. Um, but I can definitely tell you business is all about supply and demand. But if you focus on creating demand first, supply will succeed. So this kind of leads me to the end of this conversation. The reason why I'm making this video is not only to say that yes, influencers can make multi-billion dollar companies if they would like to, but this can also mean that if you are on the other spectrum where you want to start making money online and you don't know how, there's only one thing you need to fundamentally know. Get close to the consumer, have empathy and relate to your audience by making content that's true to yourself. And you might not be able to make money tomorrow, but have the faith by putting in content, you can see massive ROI with the products and merchandise you can monetize on top of it. I'm telling you, I can't go into specifics about the influencer stores that we launch and manage, but there's one YouTuber that we did, which is her name is Natalie Lynn. We did her whole e-commerce store. My company does a lot of this management for influencers and uh, brands for Shopify, but long story short, it was really successful for our first initial launch. I think we were generated over like $7,000. Um, and I have a whole video series, so I will link that in the description box if you guys want to watch it. But I just want to let you know that it is insane um, to, to be able to be here in 2020. And sometimes I'm ungrateful or I don't understand the situation. But I hope you guys can enjoy this video and let me know your thoughts. Do so you believe that influencers can make the next Nike? I would love to hear your opinions. Um, and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. Super excited to hear your thoughts. I love you guys so, so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And hey, comment below what video I should make next. If you guys want to know any specific topics, if you like influencer marketing and the psychology breakdown behind it, let me know, like it, show me support because I will literally forget if you don't. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. I have jaw surgery tomorrow actually, so I will see you not in a while, but subscribe to this video for more content. I'll see you later. Hey, so I just want to finish off this video. If you're watching right now, what's up? Thank you for being the real one and watching to the very end. But I want to ask you guys an important question and leave off with one important note. If fear was no option, what would you do? I feel like so often we've been told 
what we can't do, what's realistic, what's unrealistic. And honestly, imagine if the possibilities were endless and you could do exactly anything you want, what would you do? All right, guys, comment that below and let yourself dream for a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. Comment. Let's chat. <laughs>